um, hello guys, this is my ne this is another video on geeks, and yeah, I'm a geek. First of all, honestly, my intro isn't good, my last video was, sucks, but honestly, yeah, it sucks. But one thing is this, that I want to reply back. The thing about the uh, LGBTQ community. It seems, um, to my point of view, it seems um, contrary for me to talk about if anybody who is um, quote unquote LGBTQ watching this, I ain't trying to offend anybody. I don't put my, my put some of my truth in it. Okay. So people in the LGBTQ community have been through some fucked up things in the past, and the community keeps on saying, hey, if you going through homosexuality and gender dysphoria, you should confirm to it. And nowadays, we have TikTokers who are creepy as heck trying to go to kids and try to confuse children into saying that you're not a boy and you're not a girl. They're teaching gender studies to kids. Like, here's one thing as a Christian that I want to say is this. Why are you teaching children this kind of content? That's what I want to know. Why are you teaching kids um, that kind of stuff? Because here's what the Bible says about homosexuality. So it's nothing, okay? Yes. I, I'm just using a screen quarter, so I mean, I'm not, I don't have, you know, the high-tech equipment stuff that people get. I'm basically broke. So, I mean, you know, you make what you got. The Logos Bible. Come on, phone, please work. Please. Load, please. We like the Logos Bible. Remind me later. Shit. Okay, so uh, the lusts of the flesh. Okay, flesh. So lust of the flesh, according to the book of Jude, says, As Sodom and Gomorrah and the towns around them indulged in sexual morality and pursued a natural desire in the same way as these are inhibited, as an example of by undergoing the punishment of eternal fire. So, of eternal fire. So, yeah, homosexuality. Uh, transgenderism is a sin against God. It's basically in the Bible, which talks about, you know, these things. See, homo sexuality. Romans 1, verse 27. Otherwise, also the males, abandoning their relations with another female, were inflamed in their desire toward one another and males of males and committing shameless deeds and received themselves the penalty that is necessary for their error. So yeah, um, homosexuality is against God's created order. If you want to know what marriage that um, God ordained, according to the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 2 verse 23 says, And the man said, she is now bone of my flesh and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. 
for she has taken from the man. So basically, the woman's made for the man for company. For company. You know, the, the woman represents, like, you know, the uh, maternal side, the calmer side, and also the highly emotional side, while the man represents the stoic personality, the one that has authority in marriage. God designed males and females to work together as partners to fulfill God's purposes. God now ordained homosexuality. He now ordained that because he never did in the Bible. Not ordained because you know what I'm saying because like the Bible does clearly say that homosexuality is a sin against God. First Corinthians chapter, uh, First Corinthians chapter, um, uh, six and nine says, "Or do you not know the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither sexually immoral people, nor idolaters, nor adulterers." nor passive homosexual partners the man I hate this phone show do you not know that the unrighteous not have the king of God do not be deceived neither sexually immoral people nor idolaters nor adulterers nor passive homosexual partners nor dominant homosexual partners, nor thieves, nor greedy persons, not drunkards, not abusive persons, not swindlers, who inherit the kingdom of God. So, um, yeah, that's the basic issue. See, first of all, it's just, um, the part that got me disturbed is this, that we have a church's nowadays that support homosexuality and we have drag queens preaching in, in the churches now which in my brain I was like do you think having lesbians and gays and porn addicts and uh, and drag queens preaching the word of God isn't that forbidden in God's word because it is right because I think it's according to the book of Isaiah 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 uh, 38 In those days Hezekiah became sick to death and Isaiah son of Amos prophet come to him and say unto him thus says Yahweh order your house for you are about to die and you shall not recover so Thus says Yahweh. Yahweh means I am the I am, right? And if the thing that when Apostle Paul does talk about that we cannot have female preachers in church, which is forbidden in the word of God, and you should not have drag queens or homosexuals or porn addicts or men who married single mothers or, or you know, women who married single fathers, which is adultery against God. And so it's like, you know, uh, prostitution or anything else they should not preach in church because you see it's like that's the problem the main problem with churches nowadays they've gone so far far away from uh from uh from the bible and from god that they just want to be like well we're going to just um um accept people which listen accepting people isn't a bad thing okay but when your religion especially Christianity, there's rules and boundaries you have to enforce because religions have boundaries and Christianity has no boundaries left. Some Christian churches do, some don't. But progressive Christian churches have no boundaries. They just have drag queens and gay pastors and lesbian pastors and female pastors. And like the point that is this, like, listen, if you're a drag queen, take my advice. Stop being a drag queen 
and get your own house in order, like Isaiah says, and repent and get right with Jesus. That's what I have to say to you, okay? I know people say, hey, what if you don't make homosexuals feel alienated? I get the point. Preaching to them is a good thing because we don't want to alienate them. But the problem is you can't twist the word of God for the sake of saying that God loves homosexuality because he hates it. The Bible does declare that God loves people but hates to sin. He hates sin because the Bible says the Lord is a consuming fire. It says so in the Bible. And and, we, and then there's also a video about a, uh, a, gay, a gay Jesus. A gay Jesus, right? There, there's a gay Jesus high-fiving everyone in the crowd in Pride Parade. And I'll be all like, um, in my brain, when I was watching this whole thing go ordeal, in my brain, I was like, um, Just bad, man. I mean, it's bad. Like, it's all bad. It's just. Like, it's, like, it's all bad, man. Just, the question is this, that why, what has church gone down to? I'm just confused. Like, what has church gone down to? Like, back when I was a kid, like, you can accept people. I get the point. Accepting people's good, but you can't twist the word of God for the sake of, you know, for the sake of saying God loves the sin. Like drag queens and gay pastors and prosperity preachers are encouraging people to live their old lives. What is going on in church? Like, this is stupid. Why? You can accept people, okay? But a church is not meant to be some, some bullcrap, lolly-dally thingamabob. A church is meant to be a hospital for sinners. It's supposed to be a hospital for sinners. And it is. It's supposed to be for hospital for sinners because it needs to be. Like, what has, gone, what has church gone down to? I mean, like, what's church gone down to? I'm just confused now. So, here's what Jesus explained about homosexuality. Jesus says that, um, he says, and he answered and said, Have ye not read? For one for the one who created them from the beginning made them male and female, and said, On account of this a man will leave his father and his mother to be joined to his wife, and the two will become one flesh, so that they are no longer two but one flesh. Therefore what God hath joined together let I mean, man must not separate. So, Jesus explained about this in the Bible. That homosexuality 
is against God's sanctified marriage. Because people will say to me, people might end up saying to me in this video, or we might reply to it and say, you're being homophobic. And I'll be like, yeah, you're right. I'm being honest. I'm being homophobic. I know welcoming people in in church is great. I get it. We have to teach people in church the cold hard truth because you don't teach people the cold hard truth, what the Bible is, what are you doing? I mean, that's the question. What the f heck are you guys doing? I'm just confused. Just why in the fuck are, why in the heck are churches not preaching the truth anymore? That's when people become atheists because majority of people at the faith because they're not giving the whole truth. I mean, that's the part. They ain't giving people the whole truth. It's just like, what the heck is, is going on? And Jesus says to those who have homosexuality to overcome it and says, you must remain as an eunuch. So an eunuch means a virgin. A virgin is someone who never has sex people. That's reality. So if you're going to homosexuality, take my advice. Put yourself on a tight leash and what else? Do not give in to homosexuality. Okay? Because if you give in that homosexuality, there's a price to pay. A, a gay Jesus. Like they, they even got a gay Jesus in church. I'm just confused. Like progressive churches are about politics. If you look at the YouTube videos on YouTube about, I want you to go look up on YouTube and type in drag queen churches. I want you to go type in drag queen churches on YouTube. And they're going to show you the whole thing of what the heck is going on. I don't know if I'm a Christian. I'm not sure if I am or not. But this is sick. I know you can welcome people. I get the point. But if you're a religion, why in the great name of all that is holy, why in the great name of Jesus, would you just twist the word of God for the sake of people? I'm just confused. Have you guys read the book Galatians in the Bible? In the book Galatians, where Apostle Paul talks about this. He says, he says, I'm astonished that you are turning away so quickly from the one you called by the grace of Christ to a different gospel. Not that there is a different gospel, except there are some who are disturbing, who are disturbing you, wanting to distort the gospel of Christ. But if even if we are an angel from heaven, should proclaim a gospel to you, Contrary to what we proclaim to you, let it be accursed. As we said before, as just now say again, if anyone is proclaiming the gospel to you contrary that you have received, let him be accursed. For I am now making an appeal to people or to God. Am I seeking to please people or I were trying to please people? I would not be a slave for Christ. So, listen, I get the point, welcoming people is one thing, I get it, I do. But the thing that I just don't get is that why are you twisting the word of God? Like, just why are you twisting it? I'm just confused. Like, the Christian religion... Is supposed to have boundaries, but there are no boundaries. You can welcome people, helping sinners, because it's good. Like a church is meant to be a hospital for sinners. 
like I can't speak well. My teeth are messed up. I got wisdom teeth in my in my jaw. I can't speak well because my teeth are in a way. But why are people twisting the Bible to appease a lifestyle that is against God's word? Even promoting pornography and makeup and having kids that have sex outside of marriage and encouraging weddings. Like, I'm just confused. Like, the church had gone away from the Bible. Like, we could teach God's love, and we can. Like, teaching the love of Christ is good. It's a good thing. But we can't twist the word of God for the sake of people. It's not right, it's wrong. Teaching people the truth of what the Bible is. Heck, that's what it is going to be. Like, I don't know English. I don't know Greek. Sorry, I do know English, my bad. Like, I don't know Greek. I don't know Hebrew. Like, I don't know. I just, I got a Bible on my phone. It's written in English. And it's the language I, I know. I cannot interpret it or break it down. I just say it as it is. And read as it is. Listen. You can welcome people. Okay? I agree with 100%. But don't twist it for the sake of your lifestyle. Don't twist it. Like, here I'm going to look at, I'm going to give you a video on YouTube to, to emphasize my point. To tell you what's really going on. Come on. Drag Queen Church. See? You see this shit? You see? See this? This is what I'm talking about. This is a problem. You see, we look in the Bible about Evil, good. Oh, shit. In the book of Isaiah, you see, in the book of Isaiah, chapter uh, There's no as where is Isaiah at? There it is. In the book of Isaiah, chapter chapter Good, evil. Okay, good. So this is what I'm trying to talk about here. People in the church that I showed you right now. See? See that? Like clapping their hands and shit. You see that? See, this is what I'm talking about. This is ugly, disturbing, disgusting, and I don't like it. I hate it. It's wrong, and people are clapping hands. Like, they're a bunch of idiots. 
the audience in there are idiots. And if I don't want to sound, I don't want to curse. It ain't Christian me to say this, but I want you guys to listen to this messed up prayer that this drag queen's gonna say, cause. <laughs> This is going to be complete stupidity. Complete utter stupidity. This is... May your words shine upon us like glitter under the stage lights. Yep. <laughs> I'm confused. What the f heck... I can't listen. You know what? I need to pull my crap together and just try not to talk crap. I'll try just. No, I will talk crap. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna promise that because I'm, I'm, I ain't gonna promise it. May it pop like a death drop in a crowded, dingy basement. Yeah. L look at the audience. Look at the audience. Like, nobody's even there. Peace. Few people are there. Majority of people got it. So, like, fuck this shit out of my mouth. That's what they're like. This is. Dumb. I can't deal with this shit. I just can't. I can't deal with this shit. What the hell, man? No, no. No, no. This is what I'm talking about. I'm an atheist and I imply the church is a place of worship while dressing acting appropriately to show respect to our God. It's not a garish circus where you worship yourself. See, even an atheist agrees with, with what with what we're saying. Yeah, another I see that's the part I'm trying to get here. Why are people doing this? The church is not meant to be some bullcrap drag show. A church is meant to be a house of worship. If Jesus was born like in nineteen eighty something, and if he was here seeing this, he'll be angry right now. I mean, he'll be angry. Because remember the Pharisees, when Jesus said to the Pharisees, it is written in scripture, my father's house is meant to be a house of prayer. But thou hast turned it into a den of thieves, a den of rebels. I mean, if Jesus was there right now, like physically right now, like if he was like born like in 1980 something, if he was physically there in America seeing this stuff, he'll be angry out of his mind. He'll be angry. And trust me, the Most High, Jesus, has every right to be angry with this because this is an outrage. This is disgusting. And I hate it. Like, for real. It's just, like, I know welcoming people is one thing. I get the point. Really, I do. Really, I do get it. Like, we live in a society nowadays that everything has been complete flipped upside down. Like, whether if you're an atheist or a Christian, if you're watching this, you can welcome people. I get it. But when you welcome people, despite their sins, you have to make sure there's boundaries to be like be in churches because if you're a Christian church you must obey your book that's it okay obey the New Testament scriptures on how to order yourself as a church that's it because back when I was a child right I grew up a Clark Methodist that's why I grew up when I was a child I was and 
when I was a child, we don't have this kind of stuff because I never heard of what, I don't know what a drag queen was back then. I was a kid back then. I was, I was like probably, I don't know, like five or six or something or 10. I don't know how it was. I don't know what a drag, I don't know what, I don't know what a drag queen is. I just don't know what it is. Okay. But the thing is this, that Christian churches have no boundaries because drag queen churches and feminist churches, they don't care about religion. All they care about is politics. Because if you're gay or not, and you're watching this, you would know that a church should not do this, okay? Obey your book, that's it. Separate religion and state. LGBTQ, uh, liberal, fundamentalist views, all these things need to be put in state. Do not put your political ideology in the Christian church, okay? The Christian church is religion. We help sinners. We, um, we uh, heal souls. We save souls. That's it. Okay? I know I shouldn't say the word shit in that. I know it's inappropriate. I'm sorry for saying that. But it's it's still like it's a church. Like is there like there's no you can help you can welcome in. Okay I'm saying? Just welcome them in. Like I don't mind that shit. I said it again, but I don't mind it. I don't. But if you're religion but if you're religion, like if you preach the Bible, like Preach the Bible as it is, right? Educate them. Just teach what the Bible. Teach as it is. Don't break it down. Just teach as it is. It's, it's a book. with a, It's a library book full of library books written by 66 people, by 40 people or authors or whatnot of different accounts of what the Messiah is, of the Messianic King is. Listen, Welcoming people is okay. I get the point. But there's boundaries we have to enforce in the church. And tell them, not, not try to beat them, or just tell them that doing these things is not okay. We're here to teach, educate, help them learn. These people are sick. They don't need to be killed or annihilated. They need help. Preachers, male preachers, Men, they need to be doctors to teach the sinners on how to live right by God, by Christ. Like when Christ says, love one another, he is just saying, just be friendly. Love means to protect. Apostle Paul says, love protects. You have to warn people of their sins. Tell them that it's wrong. But do it with love and compassion. Just approach them saying, listen, I love you, man, but it's wrong. It's not biblically, it's not biblically accurate. It's not right. You know what I'm saying? Like, we love people and we do. But we can't just like love them like you know the way like we love them, we love the sinner. We do that, right? But we love the sinner. We have to warn the sinner of their sins. Because if they keep on doing this, they're going to hell. All forms of sexual morality. All forms of sexual morality. All forms of murder. Lying. Deceiving. And uh, thievery. All these things. Those things will lead you to go to hell. Listen, I'm not here to try to talk crap to anyone who's going through gender dysphoria homosexuality I ain't trying that I love you guys but this is a Christian church okay just this is a Christian church but America destroy, had destroyed the gospel America destroyed the gospel because they just screwed the whole thing up they screwed it up I love you guys I do but this ain't right it's not wrong. It ain't right. Like we love people and we do love people.
And I get it. And, and, and I get it. Loving people is okay. Yeah, you know I mean, loving people is great. But you can't fucking mold the word of God for sake of political agenda. Because what if you're in a fundamentalist Christian church or what if you're in a fundamentalist Christian church or a progressive church? They don't care about the word of God. All they care about is a political agenda. Whether from the right or the left, all they care about is politics. They don't care about serving the Lord. What they care about is what? What do they care about? All they care about is politics. Whether you're in a fundamentalist or a progressive Christian church, all they care about is politics. They don't care about preaching the Bible as it is. They, 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 they just don't care. Like, like, I made mistakes in my life. I'm not a good person. I'm not better than you. I'm a sinner like you. But this needs to stop. Okay? I love you guys. But this needs to stop. Because, like, when will... Like, even if I were an atheist, I would know that having drag queens and gay pastors is stupid because, one, it's against the New Testament Bible. If you're a Christian and you're in a church, you're supposed to obey your Bible. Obey the book. Believe in Christ. Confess your sins. Repent. Believe in Christ, what he did for you on the cross, and confess with thy mouth that he died on the cross for your sins and came back on the third day. And be baptized in water. But instead, they don't do that no more because all they, call, all they care about, like both fundamentalist and progressive and prosperity gospels, what they care about is politics and money. All they care about is politics and money. They don't care about the word of God. They, they just don't care. Like, I'm just... Like for real. Like like they they just don't care anymore. I mean there's there's a lot of videos on this, like Matt Walsh, Russian egg Russian uh K D and uh a Treasure Christ. Like all these things. Like, but this is like, this is like complete stupidity. I'm, I'm sorry, but I just can't deal with this. I just cannot. Okay. And who's the drag queen? Miss Pentecost? Miss Pentecost, I want to say one thing to use this. You need to get your house in order. You need to repent. Believe what the heck you're doing. Review your life choices. And that's it. Okay? Just don't preach anymore. Okay? T -t Take my advice. If you're being a drag queen and trying to twist the gospel for sake of politics... For sake of your progressive political agenda. I don't care if you're the far right or the far left. I just don't even care. If you're trying to do that. You need to don't preach anymore. Okay. Just don't preach. Alright. Just, just don't preach period. I mean this, this is a, this is the return of. Of, of Christ's coming because the Bible does talk about that people will be loving themselves and people start scoffing the the, the the beginning of the return of Christ people will start worshiping idols and stuff it's happening right now in America I mean it's been happening since 75 years 
75 years in American history. People like people worship superheroes and bow down to people in capes. That's the, that's the worshiping right now. They're worshiping superheroes now. You have people worshiping money. They're worshiping politics. We have people worshiping false gods. And the sad fact is, many people will go to hell and more and less will go to heaven. I mean, they're drag queens, they're men dressing up as women. And you can't deceive us because we know what a drag queen is. We have common sense, both females and males alike. We have common sense what a drag queen is. We have common sense. But sadly, common sense just, just has been, has left the window. Like, like, listen. I'm asking for you this. If you're a Christian, pray for the gay, pray for the drag queen, make sure they get transformed and make sure they act right for God because this needs to stop. Because the church is not meant to be some prosperity, fundamentalist, progressive, political, financial church. A church is designed to be a hospital for sinners. That's what it's designed for. It's supposed to help sinners to be rehabilitated. Okay? Rehabilitate people. Help them. People need help. Because this needs to stop. Like, if you're a drag queen or a gay pastor or a lesbian or a female, take my advice. Get the heck out of church and don't preach, okay? Do not preach in church. Get your life together, think about your life choices, and that's it. Just think about what you're doing because this this needs to stop. Get right with God, repent, that's it, okay? Because Christ can help you. I cannot help you at this point. You have to help yourself because I cannot help you at this point because really I cannot. Because, like, what, what did Peter say in the Bible? Like, Second Peter, chapter 2, verse 13. What does it say? How about Second Peter, chapter 2, verse 12? It says, But the persons, like irrational animals... Born only with natural instincts for capture and killing, blaspheming about things. They do not understand in their destruction and will be also be destroyed, being har- harmed as wages of unrighteousness, considering prevailing in the daytime a pleasure. There are saints' blem- blemishes carousing in their own deceitful pleasures when they feast together with you, having eyes full of desire and full of adulterous and unceasing from sin, enticing unstable persons, and having hearts trained for greediness, accursed children. By leaving the straight path, they have gone astray because they follow the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but received a rebuke of his own lawlessness, a speechless donkey, receiving speaking with a human voice strained in prophet's madness. These people are wireless springs and mist driven by a hurricane for whom the gloom of darkness has been reserved. For by speaking high sounded but empty words, they enticed the desires of the flesh and there is licentiousness and those are scarcely escaping from those who live in error, promising them freedom until they themselves are slaves of depravity. For to whatsoever someone succumbs by this is also enslaved. For if after they have escaped 
from defilements of their wor world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They are again entangled in these things and succumb to them. At let in the last state has become worse for them and then than the first. For it would have been better for them not to know the way of righteousness than having in, in known it. To turn back from the holy commandments that they have been delivered to them and the statement of the true proverb has happened to them. A dog wearants its own vomit, and so, after washing herself, returns to the walling in the mud. So these people, these uh, fundamentalist, progressive, prosperity, churches, what they talk about is politics, money, sexual morality. They don't even talk about, about sin or repentance or sanctification. They don't talk about this no more. They, 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 don't, they don't. And these people, right? These people, right? They claim to be prophets. Like they, they claim to be prophets of the Most High God. But in reality, they're false prophets. This is why people, men of God, you have to be aware of what people that are teaching you the gospel. You have to be aware. This is why the Bible says, keep your guard up. Yep. Keep your guard up. You need to keep your guard up at all times because if you don't, you're going you're gonna to die, man. That's a fact. Save yourselves. So, this is what I had to say to these people. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 16 says, Fix your attention on yourself and on your own teaching. Continue in them, for by doing this, you will save both yourself and those, and those who hear you. Yep. I mean, I'm just confused. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 5. Save yourself like a gazelle from a hand or like a bird from the hand of a fowler. Like, listen, if you're going to receive salvation, you need to save yourself, right? You need to make a choice to either receive Christ or not receive Christ. Those who do not receive Christ will die and go to hell. That's a fact. Hell's a real place. And it is. And you should not take it lightly. It's bad. It's bad. It's really bad. Okay? It's bad. And I don't want no one to go there. I don't want anybody to go there. I just don't. Okay? I really don't. All right? I, I don't want anyone to go there. I really don't. But this, so Proverbs 6 verse 3 says, Do this then, my child, save yourself, for you have come onto the palm of your neighbor's hand. Go humble yourself and plead with your neighbor. So listen, I'm a sinner, okay? I'm not a good person. And if you can judge me righteously of what I've done, okay then, you can do so. You'll be saving me. And I'll be saving myself. I'm judging righteously, right? And saving you and saving myself. Because this is a dire warning from Jesus Christ. That if this happens, if this continues to happen, God is withstanding his wrath upon us. It's because he's showing us mercy. But if we keep on doing this, we're going to die. I got to be real with you. 
We're going we're gonna to die. Okay? We're going to die. First Peter chapter uh, three. So the one who wants to love life and see good days, keep his tongue from evil and lips from not speaking deceit, and he must turn away from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Suffering for doing what is good. And who is the one who will harm you from you are a zealous inherit from what is good? But even if you might suffer for the sake of righteousness, you are blessed. Do not be afraid of their intimidation or be disturbed, but set Christ apart as Lord in your hearts. Always make ready to make a defense to anyone who asks you for an accounting concerning the hope that is in you. But do so with courtesy and respect, having a good conscience and not so that in the things of which you are slandered, the ones that malign your good conduct, Christ may be on, be put in Christ. And conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if God wills it, for than doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, in order he could bring you to, to God in being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went <coughs> and proclaimed to spirits in prison. So like, listen, God loves you and he does. But we can't try to, if we are Christians, if we're encountered by prosperity preachers or, or gay pastors or drag queen pastors or anything else, we need to stand our ground. We need to like walk away or we stand our ground and just say, listen, I love you, but according to the Bible is forbidden. I don't know Greek. I don't know Hebrew. All I know is English. Like, I'm an American, okay? I'm African-American. All I know is English. That's all I know. Okay? I don't know any Hebrew. I don't know any Greek. I just don't know. All I know is English. That's all I know. And what the Bible says is this. It says, be sober. First, chapter 5, verse 8, it says, be sober. It says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, so he may exalt you in the right time, casting all your cares on him because he cares for you. Be sober and be on the alert. For your adversary the devil walks around like a roaring lion so you may devour. Resist him as steadfast in your faith, because you know the same kinds of suffering you're being accomplished by your community 
of believers in the world and the grace and the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have been suffered for a short time and will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. So listen. Like, Christ loves you guys and he does. But he doesn't tolerate this. Listen, love and tolerance are not the same thing. Tolerance is something you become a... Uh, like that, right? The Lord loves you, man. But this, should needs, to, this needs to stop. Okay? So, God loves you. Peace. And um, in the mighty name of Jesus, every stronghold, every uh, principality, every stronghold, every principality be uh, torn down in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray in the name of Jesus that every principality in this world be torn down and be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. And, and save the kids, save the adults, save the drag queen save the homosexual from themselves so they can repent and get right with you lord jesus please in my name jesus save them please lord jesus save them okay please save them i'm asking you from my humble heart please save them right please so yeah I know it's long, it's 57 minutes long, I get it, but hope you guys get it, just pray for the sinners, hope they get right with God, and that way they can, like, you know, get right with Jesus Christ, okay, I don't want them to go to hell, I don't want them to go there, I don't, okay, but they ain't stopped doing this, so goodbye.